What's up guys, my name is the AFK Abi, and today I am bringing you a complete run through of Guardians of the Rift as an Abi peer or a skiller to maximize your points using no pouches at all. There aren't too many requirements to begin this minigame. Rune Mysteries and Enter the Abyss, then 10 Runecraft to complete the Temple of the Eye. The quest will show you how to play or you can skip it all and watch this guide. Now that you're here, it's recommended that you have 56 agility to mine the large guardian remains, the Varrock armor 1 or better, the 41 plus mining just use the best pickaxe you can, and the Guardians of the Rift helper runelight plugin. That is very crucial and helpful. Ironically, the hardest part about the minigame isn't even in the game itself, it's passing the barrier. I have hopes that this will eventually get fixed because it feels like a massive problem, but this is on a main world and in my personal experience, Worlds with 600 plus players are the sweet spot when doing the minigame, so feel free to hop around and find what suits you best. Once you do pass the barrier, grab 10 uncharged cells at the top table on the right and then head east. Climb down the rubble and wait for the minigame to start. I like to keep only my game chat box open to watch when the game begins so I can begin mining. Mine the large guardian remains until you have 200 fragments then head back up the rubble. If you don't have the mining level to do this then just mine as many fragments as you can until the timer reaches about 0 minutes and 0 seconds. This gives you time to climb the rubble and run back to the bench for your first inventory. This is the AFK part of the minigame, so you can go let your dog out, wash your hands, prepare lunch and eat it while watching a good OSRS YouTuber instead of me, use the bathroom, wash your hands again, and then come back and wing it, or relax and listen to a few things you can learn about what goes on within this minigame. There's two points you can obtain in this minigame, Elemental and Catalytic. Having a game plan on which points you want during the game can be a real time saver. There are 4 elemental altars and 8 catalytic altars, the 4 elemental altars being air, water, earth, and fire, the 8 catalytic being mind, body, cosmic, chaos, nature, law, death, and blood. Us obbies can access all but law, death, and blood, while skillers can access all but cosmic, law, death, and blood. Two things happen when you imbue essences on an altar. You either get an elemental or a catalytic guardian stone based on which altar you went into, and you get a charging cell. These charging cells range from weak to overcharged depending on which altar you imbue your essences at. Placing these cells on barriers give energy in both elemental and catalytic. Air, mind, and body are weak cells giving you 2 recharging and strengthening energy for both. Water, cosmic, and chaos are medium cells giving 5 recharging and 7 strengthening energy. Earth, nature, and law are strong cells giving 9 recharging and 13 strengthening energy for both. Fire, death, and blood are overcharged cells giving 15 recharging and 22 strengthening for both. Now that the timer has either dropped to zero or you have 200 fragments, let's climb the rubble and run southwest to get guardian essences at the workbench. Now that your inventory is filled with guardian essences, pick your respective altar. In this video, you will see me dig really deep on elemental points as I need them for the reward system. Once you imbue your essence at the altar, you will get the charging cell we spoke about earlier and stones. These stones get turned into the great guardian in the middle of the map for energy based on the altar they were imbued from. At this point, let's go ahead and turn in the stones, plant the cell, and immediately look for where this teleport location is at. The teleport location should be easily accessible to the right of your current energy for the game. Run north or south and immediately start mining the huge guardian remains for essences straight into your inventory. This is crucial because not only does it not diminish your fragments and like the workbench, but you spawn right beside the great guardian ready to imbue some more stones and give some more cells. You don't know it yet, and this is something we're going to learn together over time, but I am about to make a crucial mistake. 
You can locate the timer for how long the altars will remain open in between your elemental and catalytic energy indicators. Notice the little bit of time I had left until they switched. I should have known that air is the lowest possible level to craft and I was going to get a weak cell that I always drop. Watch me immediately regret imbuing these essences into the air runes when I should have halted my steps and waited. We ended up letting fire runes and an overcharged cell giving us 15 energy in both categories minimum slip through our fingertips. But now that that lesson is over, we learned from it, we went back to the workbench, we got more essences, make sure you turn in your stones. This is already lesson number two, I forgot to turn in the stones, so turn in those stones, hop into the next portal, get your essences imbued, get another cell, drop the runes, I always drop the runes because it's not about money, so drop the runes, go straight back to the workbench, this isn't going to be like the first time. We're not going to turn in the stones and plant the cell right away, we're going to sacrifice those two inventory spaces to make everything more fluent. When you teleport out of the altar anyway, you kind of end up by the workbench, so it makes more sense to fill up your inventory with the essences, turn in your stones, plant the cell, and then go and view the essences for more stones, rinse and repeat. The only other thing you need to worry about for the rest of the game is the portal opening allowing you to mine essences straight into your inventory. If you look underneath your energy indicators you'll notice a time since portal number rising. Once this rises between I believe 110 and 120 a portal will open. Watch as I take this run and make the fire runes and instead of going back to the workbench I turn in my stones, plant my cell, and make my way south knowing a portal will open for quick access to essences and a spawn back and right beside the great guardian. The rest of this video is just watching for those portals and making sure you keep the ball rolling. You want as high as energy possible as you want the points for. So the rest of this video is just making good decisions and I'm going to let you guys in on a little bit of what I was thinking at the time and hopefully that helps you make better decisions as well. Watch as I take a page out of my own book and watch the timer run down in hopes of obtaining a better cell. Once you are in an altar area, you can't be kicked from it when the timer runs out. I waited and was unfortunate to get air, so we got the stones and back to the workbench we went. Once again, you watch me wait to see if we can get a better cell, and I kind of preemptively left because this would have sucked getting air, but luckily we did get fire. So now we get that minimum of 15 for both catalytic and the elemental energy. Unfortunately, I can't tell you if this was a good or bad decision or not because I had the cell and stones to turn in. I could have made the air runes and been back at the bench by the time the timer was out. You'll get better at these situations with time, of course. Luckily, our decision panned out and we got the earth altar with the strong earth cell to plant for the dual energy. Keep an eye on that time since portal timer. They are too convenient to miss them often. They play a key role in this whole process. Right here was another insane decision that I almost didn't pull off. The game was going well and I knew that it was 50% done while I have 50 catalytic points. We have stones to turn in, the first fire portal is open, meaning an overcharged cell with a minimum of 15 points going towards both energies. I left out of the portal and dashed for the fire runes in hope of making it in time, and we did. Not only did we squeak by, but we got the fire talisman, meaning that we can open the fire portal whenever we'd like.
we have our inventory of essences and I could open the fire portal, but it makes more sense to plant our cell and go into the earth altar for a one tier lower, being a strong cell and keep the fire talisman for a run where my only option is air or maybe water. Crazy enough, we get another opportunity to grab a strong cell from the earth altar and keep our fire talisman. This game's going pretty solid so far. Luck was again on our side for the time being, and we got Earth again. We noticed a portal for Mining Essence popped again, and now we are well on our way for a fantastic game. The game is going so well that we have to pick up more uncharged cells and that's a great thing. Here's where my lessons learned came back again. I have seconds before I use my fire talisman on the portal then stop to wonder if maybe I'll get the option for earth or even luckier, fire. We get the fire portal and we rush in, get the stones and cell and rush out straight to the workbench knowing this game will be ending soon. I know for a fact that I'm using this talisman to quickly get one more run in and crazy enough, I don't even have to use it. As you can see, RNG and great decision making on top of an amazing game plan will get you a long way in this minigame. Thank you for watching, if this guide helped you feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, thank you.